guys, uh, welcome to another video. Um, I want to first apologize for my last video. Uh, kind of rickrolled everybody. Uh, special, special apologies to um, Cold Blooded Chiller too. Um, sorry, it was uh, all in good fun. Anyway, um, on the new video we have. I'm going to cover the other uh, two or three days ago. I had somebody asking about how I calculate how I look at divergences at f firstly just how I, how I identify them and that's pretty easy um, but also like you know which ones do I take more seriously than others because I mean you could you can look at divergences all day um, and from what I've personally noticed I mean the bigger the wider the divergence um, the stronger uh, the counter trend, <clears throat> or you know, if it's a bullish divergence, um, the price goes up more, and vice versa. Uh, then next, I'm going to cover um, the A rune, and I'm going to cover why I use it. Um, when I first started using it, it was probably back in March, uh, maybe April. <clears throat> um, probably used it full time, I guess. Uh, starting in June, um, and from what I gather, I was probably one of the only ones that used it. Now I know there's bigger demand for it, so I definitely not claiming that uh, I was a part of that. But it, it's good to see. I mean, it's it's good to see people use different indicators. And you know, I did write a medium article on this. Um, I can repost it if you guys want. Um, it was probably my most popular article by a long shot. Probably. Two or three times more popular than the, than the next one, um, so I'll cover that. I'll cover why I use it. Um, also, going to cover why I use my other indicators. Uh, RSI. I use the standard RSI. I use a special uh, Stotch, uh, or I can never say the word statistic. Um, uh, so I'm going to cover that. I'm going to cover why I use <coughs> the MAs that I do. I, I use the 9, 20, 50, and 100 EMAs. Technically, I use a 99 EMA. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why I picked that over the 100. Um, and I also cover other things that I use. Um, and honestly, I'm not, I'm not perfect here. I'm not claiming I know everything. Uh, these are just... I learned all these, like, earlier this year. <laughs> so, and... Uh, really a special thanks to a lot of you guys in the group um, for some reason you know I just sorry I turned, that, turned the discord off um, you know a lot of you guys know quite a bit and that, that's really great um, and uh, sorry I'm just getting tons of notifications um, I literally threw my phone <laughs> across the room um, so yeah I just I'm just gonna share what I know what I'm used to knowing uh, what what I've noticed works for me and I'm so thankful that I'm, I'm really thankful for all you guys uh, special thanks for a lot of you guys that honestly I feel like you guys know way more than me um, so it's humbling that you guys are even here I mean honestly so um, I'm gonna use um, the bat token um, as <clears throat> my prime example here because I can stay on this chart and show you everything that I just told you um, within the past looks like the past two two weeks or so ever since you know the 18th 16th whatever um, so anyway let's I'm gonna dive in so with divergences um, one thing you want to notice with a divergence is a separation between the price action and uh, the trend of the in, of the indicator oscillator. Um, you can do this. I primarily do this with RSI. You can also do it with um, the Stotches statistics. <laughs> um, I believe you can do it with MACD. Um, I believe you can do it with A rune oscillator, which is different than the A rune indicator. So the A rune oscillator combines these two lines here I prefer to use them separate um, 
because it helps me analyze price better because um, I'm primarily a price action trader um, instead of a trend trader um, although I use trends to help decipher um, anyway um, what else can you use uh, you can use the KST um, I think you can use the ATR but I'm not for sure um, a lot of just a lot of single single line indicators and oscillators you can use for divergences um, and some of them give off the signals some of them don't uh, the most popular ones uh, obviously are the RSI and the Stotch. Um, so I noticed like right here there's a significant jump here so let's say you know, let's say we were back on the 21st you know um, about seven days ago or so <clears throat> and you know we got this big jump here and you know this is easy to do in hindsight it's a lot harder when it's actually coming out you know relevant to the time but you know we had a 17 almost 18 percent jump and I believe that was right around the time that 0x was placed on coinbase so everybody was like oh that's gonna get put on coinbase cardano maybe and you know and zcash like everybody's freaking out about these coins last week um, and honestly I wanted to FOMO in but I I've conditioned myself I used to FOMO all the time earlier this year because like I first started my first trade was December 4th 2017 I'll never forget that but when I first started in January, you know, you know, everything was still bull runnish type, starting to fade off. February it was like so depressing, and um, from February to probably March, so like a two month time, maybe even April, even, you know, it was just I was still fumbling quite a bit, and and you know I I toned that down, probably April. And then I just I conditioned myself just to remove my emotions from trades, just to not FOMO. And now it's almost the opposite. Now as soon as I see someone, excuse me, as soon as I see someone talk about a coin that has pumped or broken out on Twitter, like I don't even, I almost don't even care anymore, because I'm so used to myself just not FOMOing anymore. So I'm I'm just thinking I'm gonna take a mental note of that. I'm gonna write it down take a screenshot or whatever <clears throat> and calculate a support and resistance for that and then consider after it breaks out or breaks down to uh, buy on retest you know um, so I try to do that instead you know and I may lose out on a certain percentage but um, that certain percentage is a little more guaranteed a little more probably not as not as fast as other things um, but you know I'm used to taking you know these small sure profits instead of larger you know unsecured profits because um, I'm so used to just getting wrecked on these small you know these 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 pumps you know and, and it, they pump you know that I mean I've been involved in pumps that I mean went 100 150 percent and then they retrace like half so you just lost you know 50 to 70 percent for absolutely no reason uh, just because you just didn't want to take profits or you you know you're you're had your emotion in the game or whatever um, so anyway so let's go back to this the bat token um, I felt like I kind of got off track but you know I pumped almost 18 percent here and I mean honestly like since we're still in the bear market, um, 18%, uh, in my opinion, is still a decent amount. I'm not always. I mean, like Raven tokens went up, you know, 223 percent, I think, um, and it's it retraced a little bit. I think I think it only retraced. Um, well, uh, Schiller Schiller talked about that in Discord, um, but it didn't really retrace a whole lot, and it's looking for already another a breakout move, probably in a next day or so maybe Monday uh, so sometimes it happens sometimes it don't but you know you got this 18 percent here and one thing I want to note is the RSI which is this one in the purple the RSI right here lines up to about 59 and, you know maybe uh, about 57 whatever um, somewhere around there upper 50s and then all of a sudden here it, or it, it topped out here 
um, in the in the early 80s after that pump pumped again retraced just a tiny bit here you know and then the RSI went down to <clears throat> went down to about 59.1 or 60 and then it went and then the price action went up the RSI also went up but it didn't go up as high as as the previous one so what you can notice here is even though the price went up higher um, on the 22nd middle you know, early uh, UTC 22nd um, it was still lower than it was back in you know the the day before um, even though the price was lower um, that is a divergence and it's basically when a price action diverges from what a strength indicator or a, in, an oscillator will tell you and it's telling you that something else is wrong it's saying like that trend upward is not as strong as what the strength is telling you um, and you know you really want to look at price action over indicators and oscillators like um, in my opinion like I'm not an Elliott wave trader I'm, I know limitless is um, and I'm not necessarily a trend trader. Um, Ayasu is is a good trend trader um, if you want to hit him up. Um, but like me and C3PO, we're uh, price action. Um, and a lot of times, um, you know, I, I I take a price action approach because I, indicators and oscillators may are actually la usually are lagging indicators. And that's why I also use Aaron because Aaron isn't typically a lagging indicator, unlike uh, most of them, or at least it claims to be. Um, and I feel like that is partially correct. Um, so we have, in this particular case, we're we're getting kind of a, um, not an error, but just kind of like some some off data. Um, the price is going up, but the strength is going down, um, and that is a good indication that it'll break down, um, which it did, right here. Again, this is hindsight, so it's a little bit easier, but I'm also teaching you. So, uh, to measure divergence, um, what you do is you take either the top, top of the top of the price to the other top of the price, versus the top of the index, like these two tops versus these two tops. Or these two bottoms versus these two bottoms. You, you always want to do tops versus bottoms. You don't want to you want to mix them because then that well one you'd have divergence all the time, um, but two that goes it's just not correct. It's it's a it's a bad reading. It wasn't the design of measuring divergence uh, necessarily. Um, so let's let's go uh, let's do a normal trend line. I got it in bright red for you guys. So I'm going to measure this top to this price. So I just click here. It's very simple. Click to this other top, and you know you got a pretty, uh, pretty good angle up. And let's measure the let's measure the RSI. Um, it is down. And right away, I mean, I can tell like if a price act if the price goes up and the oscillator goes down. So if this creates a higher high and this creates a lower high, um, you have what's called a bearish divergence. Now, if it's the other way around, um, you will have a bullish divergence. If for some reason the price was you know up like this and the strength was down like this, then this isn't how you're supposed to do this. But that would be a bullish divergence, um, and I don't think that it is currently on this chart. To actually show, uh, let's see here. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, so anyway, you get the idea. It's basically the opposite of this. Um, and what I was trying to show with someone um, on the group, um, which ones are more important than the other ones? Well, uh, I mean, honestly, just the bigger, the wider the space, the more prominent it is. You know, and I just I usually just take a trend angle and measure it. So it's 15 here, or 54 degrees here, and then I take another one um, and measure based off of this. So I try to just 
kind of measure it by eyesight. Um, so, and that's, you know, this one was, this one was 54, that one's 17. Uh, so you're talking about, you know, a 71 degree angle. So that's, that's pretty, that's pretty prominent. Uh, that's, that's a, a bigger deal. Um, usually the, like, the, the smaller the gap, um, the less likely it's going to matter as much. And even, and honestly, even on smaller time frames, I mean, unless you're scalping, um, you know, they're not going to matter. Like if you're, if you're swing trading, um, you know, looking at the one minute, five minute, probably 15 minutes is pretty much irrelevant um, if you're going to stay in it for a week. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you can look at it for maybe an entry or something like that. But um, And I, I primarily, um, usually almost all my trades, I try to, I usually try to trade with the week in mind. Um, you know, like, basically, yeah, you know, I look at them on Sunday, Monday, and see, like, well, what, what can happen here? And this is why I do weekly time frames, too, guys. Um, so I can kind of share um, what's ahead, you know, because I always can't get to a chart all the time, like every every hour of the day. I mean, there's times where, I mean, I do have the luxury to do it um, maybe every two hours, uh, unless I'm just busy but or have something going on. But I trade with the week in mind, um, and because of that, I tend to not look at smaller time frames. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's divergence. Um, and... You know, as a result, we can see that's where it happened. Um, you can see we dropped 12.7 percent, so that's pretty good. You, um, if you make, oh, excuse me, um, I mean, if you were, I mean, even if you caught something like this on here, or just caught this right before it, I mean, you made, you know, 17, 18 percent, and then you just stuck, stayed in and lose 12 percent. I mean. You lost sixty percent of you know your trade. Um, yeah, you know, that's that's if you're here, if you're able just to sit here and do this or place your bids. Um, so so that's that's divergence. Um, so I hope hopefully that's that helps um, you all that were asking for it. And if not, just let me know. Um, so um, let me talk a little bit about. What I, what I use, why I, what I use, and why I use it, because um, I do use the Arun, and I'm going to explain more about it um, in here in a minute. But so, I, mean, I use your basic. Well, let's just take this back here. So, I mean, I, like I said, I'm primarily a price action trader. Um, you know, I focus mainly on the candle, the candlesticks. Um, don't typically use uh, the Rinko or the Helen Ashi, um, primarily because I'm just not that familiar with it. Um, I, I'm learning, but I'm not. I'm definitely, definitely not proficient with that. There's there's way more people in our our Discord um, that use it uh, pretty well. I think Schiller and Aosu are the two top top ones that I can think of right now. Um, so if you want to learn that, you can talk to them. But um, you know, I basically use support and resistance. I found it just to be pretty, just really easy to use and really effective. Um, like Elliott Wave trading, like I, I know a few people that can use it really well, but it's it's something that's a little bit harder to understand. And <clears throat> in my opinion, you don't really get as as many more results as you can doing something else. So price action is very easy to it, it comes very natural to me um, and it's it's very effective um, and you know I I primarily I mean I I learned from a lot of resources you know online resources and, and that um, some prominent people I can think of on Twitter is trader main um, ICT uh, well obviously um, C, C3PO um, I mean these those guys are pretty good guys so, I would definitely um, hit them up. I, cred, too. I mean, 
you guys probably follow those guys, honestly. Um, I hope you follow C three PO because he's in the group. Anyway, so mainly price action, and you know your biggest thing about price action is support and resistance. Um, so you got price action comes up here, you know, and, and goes down here. Um, this right here is is basically your your resistance, and you know I could cover this in more detail later. Um, and I think C three PO is planning a tutorial series on this. So, you know, it stops, it goes up here, it wicks up here, but it stops a couple, you know, a day or two later on the candle bodies. So that's pretty much your, uh, let me put a different color here. That's your resistance. Um, this comes down, and actually it comes down right here on this. Looks like it was a little bit of a uh, bar action. <clears throat> it comes up here, breaks through, eventually comes down, and comes through this divergence that we're talking about and then it, it rests right exactly where this resistance was um, so now this was resistance broke through and it tested as support so whenever there's a, a stop in price and it goes the other way um, below a line is a resistance and above a line counts as support it's pretty pretty standard I think most of you guys probably know that but no shame if you don't you know everybody's learned um, I've had to learn it took me longer than I probably should have uh, to learn something like this um, but it's really great it's really support resistance works so effectively well like it's almost like magic <laughs> and it's like when I first started using it to to rely on I'm like is this actually gonna work and it does uh, for the most part, and you're gonna have these breaks, you know, and that's more detailed price action theory. Um, but that's the gist of it. That's why I primarily focus on the candle bodies. Um, if I have to, I mean, I can, I can just focus on a, a a naked chart, you know, without any of these, without any volume or, I mean, the volume is important, um, and I'll cover that here in a sec. But um, I mean, I can I can do just fine with this. Because if I have just the bodies, I can say like, well, here, you know, it broke, broke here. I mean, another one, you know, just pick all the places where it stopped. And I wouldn't do this all with with everything, because some of them, some of them are more important than the other ones. Um, so, but you can see, I mean, you can see, look, like. It broke through here. It tested at this one, or, or no? It it broke. This is the bark, well, kind of an order block, kind of hybrid thing. Um, stopped, tested as support, resisted, and then you know it broke all the way up here, tested as support, and then uh, it wicked right up here to resistance. So that's telling me that that's a stronger resistance than anticipated and it'll go down from there so that's kind of the idea with that I mean it it works I mean I I kind of ran that real quick so I apologize if that's not sufficient um, but that's just why I use it um, some other things that I use I mean volume you I totally recommend to use volume guys um, it's more important than any indicator Let's go ahead and do, you know, let's make that a little more contrasting so you guys can see it. Um, so the blue, I tend to use blue for uh, green uh, and then black for, <coughs> gray and black for uh, red. Um, but volume can really tell you a lot. Um, it kind of tells you, you can see here there's a big spike here. And then there's some bigger selling spikes here, but as you can see, Honestly, the most important thing I think, the the first primary thing to note about volume um, is how it can decline like this, and usually when it declines like that, um, that means um, there's there's a, a uh, there's a shift there's a shift change in um, what's going to take place. Um, so in this particular case. It went up, and you got 
you know, you got your chance to sell or retrace, and that that got exhausted, went up again, that exa got exhausted again, and then it's, it's it jumped up. So a lot of times you're going to see um, there's just there's a certain point, no matter what kind of price action takes place, where um, volume will volume will decrease. Either the the buying volume um, will reduce, and it'll keep reducing. Um, e even 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 like earlier this year about you know the capitulation um, eventually it stopped you know and that's kind of one of the reasons we're kind of in the slow slow moving pace right now um, just because the selling stopped and the buyers aren't coming in and we're just kind of stuck <laughs> you know this is probably one of the most boring boring months you know, we've had for Bitcoin and uh, it's we've had a lot of boring days the past two months um, so if you're still in it that's great um, so anyway, that's one thing, one primary thing about the volume is just noticing the, the decrease or the increase in volume. Um, another thing is this, you know, this orange line right here. One thing I tend to notice is kind of a, an average volume, and I think I have it set to the past 20 candles. Uh, yeah, so I have a MA length of 20, so it measures the past 20 volume candles and you can measure it however I mean honestly I that's the standard I believe um, uh, you can change it but I'm pretty comfortable with the 20 and as you can see with the bat I mean this is this is the average this is the one hour time frame uh, so it's not going to be too reliable for longer trades um, but you can see it, it it jumped up here and you know it now it's just starting to increase its sell volume so to me that I think that it, it might retest this line here at 3,800. By the way, 3,850. Um, but I can cover that later. Um, so that's the volume. Uh, so let's let's just get rid of that. I'm gonna just get them rid of them as we go. Uh, so the EMA. Um, so I use. You can't really see it here, but this black line here is is the nine. Blue line here is the 20, the orange is the 50, and the gray is actually a 99. It's not a hundred. Um, so I use. So out of these four, I primarily use the 920, and um, kind of gives me a good indication of some short, um, like short price action. I, I honestly, I usually use most of the most of these EMAs. I use the 920 and the 99 for short time frames um, but I kind of I usually use this for for one crosses so like you, you can't really see it because it's a big candle but uh, the 9 went below the 20 so it's going to go down even more um, and you know we lost that 12% I mentioned probably about 10% of that was after, was when that cross started um, and then it crossed upward here so I, I usually use the 920 for uh, sometimes I use it for um, the 920 crosses, um, but also I use it for the way it behaves. Uh, the price action tends to behave around right in the middle on the nine. Um, and I've noticed some things: how it'll spike up, it'll kind of ride this 20, jump back down, kind of ride both of them, and um, usually that's if it rides the nine enough, it'll jump up. Um, just a little pattern I've used. Um, the 50, um, 50 I use for more bigger time frames, um, but I've noticed it just the price action just behaves very well on the 50. Honestly, like you can see here, like when it spiked, it jumps, hits the 50, spikes 50. You know, kind of rises 50, jumps, broke through the 50. You know, and it's it relatively behaves on the 50 so it's just something I've used and it's like I said it's worked for me for what I want to use it for um, so you know use whatever works for you so the 99 or the 100 rather so I use the 99 instead of the 100 100 so there's really not that much difference there's a little bit of difference <coughs> um, but the 99 is a little bit better at catching at catching these tests and it's kind of uh, so we we just got a new member called Bull of Bitcoin. He's a, he's a good buddy of mine. 
um, that he taught me the 99 um, it's kind of a scalping tool that he uses I haven't used it as much for scalping but I've also noticed because a lot a lot of exchanges just use the 99 instead of the 100 because I guess they can't do a three digit uh, I guess they can't put three digits on the code I guess it's limited so they use 99 I mean, that's part of why I do it too it's to use something that's familiar already on exchanges so I don't have to stare at an exchange the whole time you know because like with with the bat token it's on binance it's on bitrix and i know binance uses 99 um, so i just use it on trading view and you know it works it works out and like i said it's not too much different than the 100 so it's not it, i found it a little more accurate at times but it's not you, you get a little more benefit without much of a disadvantage as a 100 so that's that's pretty much why i mean if you use 100 you'll probably be fine um so anyway but you know, one thing I've also noticed too is that it'll it'll ride the 920, bounce off the 50, and then it'll try to also bounce off the 99100. So that's a little thing too. I've noticed that the increments, the bouncing increments, usually are 20, 50, 100. Um, so again, that's just what I'm used to. Um, so let's let's get rid of that. Hope that wasn't confusing. I don't know what I'm doing here. Why do I even do this? Okay, um, so RSI, you guys are pretty familiar with, with RSI. Uh, strength, this indicates that the strength of the trend is, is very strong. And it's going to get reduced, potentially. And, you know, right here is when... You know, this has been pretty strong, actually. Uh, right here is where it's gotten weaker. And you would expect... Generally, the general idea is... If it's really high, it's going to come down, and if it's low, it's going to go up. That's pretty pretty simple. And this green arrow, this green arrow, purple area, I'm sorry, um, is a way to help visualize that better. So that's pretty much it. And with, with the RSI and then the divergence that we talked about earlier, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to cover the statistic. I can't say that. If I had to pay money to get that right, I'd, I would uh, lose all my trade money. Um, so anyway, so the suggest the stotch, um, same th same idea, you got your, your overbought, your oversold areas, um, and, you know, it consists of, you know, this consists of a moving average and just I think the D is the moving average. The K is like um, just an average of the high and lows, um, which is also what the Aaron is part of, and that's why I like the two together, is because they're, they're very similar uh, in some ways, but they also differ to give me different uh, results that I'm looking for. Um, but uh, as you can probably guess, I use the 21, 3, and 3 instead of the 14, 3, and 3. Um, and it does give a little bit different results. So let's see here. Let's see if I can bring that up. Um, and these results aren't really that different. And I think I covered this in either general discussion or alt discussion. Um, how it, it fires. It fires a little more accurately, just like the 99 versus the 100 EMA. Um, but it doesn't have too many disadvantages. Um, so so right here it fired the same. That one fired the same. And a lot of the, this may not be an accurate uh, current time frame. Uh, I didn't check this beforehand, to be honest. Let's see. So these are all matching up. Uh, we'll know where we got. So this one, this one fired off um, one hour before this one did. And you know, and that that's not going to make a big difference in this case. I mean, you're talking. A maximum, you know, of 1.1 percent if you happen to sell at the wick or whatever. Um, but on a bigger time frame, that makes a difference. I've seen it, you know, with 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 Bitcoin, it it, it would catch it caught it caught that big last drop that we had, you know, a, a day before <clears throat> or a half day before, you know, the 14.3 would. 
Um, and honestly, like the biggest, I mean, it's just, it takes 21 days as a measurement instead of 14 days. So it measures 50% um, more days calculated into into the into the K line. Um, so that's really all it is. And honestly, it just it tweaks it a little bit different. I mean, this here you can tell this went up while this went down. Um, and this looked a little more accurate to the price action. And you know, it's it is what it is. If you're comfortable with 14.3, that's fine. I'm not I'm not here to convince you. By the way, I'm just saying like the 21.3 just is more comfortable to how I'm I'm used to using it. Um, so that's that. And with you know the same here with you, know, you get the blue line is my um, I kind of subconsciously call it my bullish line. If it crosses below the the black line, it's going to go down. In this particular case, it stayed up and then it crossed again. So it went down again. So you got the you got the stotch crosses um, that kind of help with that too. Um, so I mean that's that's it with the the stotch and um, I'm glad because I can't say the word anymore um, or I never did actually. Um, so anyway, Aaron. Last but not least, um, my favorite indicator that I use. Um, so the blue line is my what I call my my bullish line, it, it measures the past number of days. Um, so, And I use a length of 14, so it takes 14 candles, in this case 14 hours. It takes the past 14 days, hours, whatever time frame you're on, and it calculates when the last time it was, when it received um, a generational high or generational low. So in this particular case, the blue line will measure how many days it's been since we had a high in the past 14 days the other line the Aaron down line uh, will measure how many days it's been since we've had a a new low in the past 14 days so um, it says a hundred so on here on the side it shows a hundred um, so basically what it's basically saying is we have not had any it's actually it's very confusing because the 100 really means that there's there hasn't been um, a new high since then or, or rather it actually it's a percentage chance like there's a hundred percent the hundred percent that we have a new high so there's and you can you we can count this here so let's um, go back here and obviously this is easy to tell so we go back 14 days, um, and you can see like the past high that we had was here, um, and then that's th that's still, if you still measure this up here, it's still going back. So you could even, you go back to 28, and you know with a big uptrend like this, the the Aaron's going to be, is going to be like that. Um, so what we, I'm trying to find the example I was going to show you. Um, so like right here on the 20th we can see the Aaron down um, when, when we see when we see the price bottom down like this um, you can tell like uh, the price is going down uh, that's obvious but when it goes down when when the indicator goes down it has a higher chance of going back up um, almost always um, so as you can see this price went up and then I went went down a little bit, but then it went back up again. So that was the A run. It maxed back up again. Um, but what I want to notice here is is this bearish line that it stayed down. It stayed down to about here. Um, so what I want to note is on the 20th of October, it was at um, was it uh, 36.48. So, or no, rather, this is the previous one, I'm sorry, uh, 3722. So, if it's down and it goes up, that means, or what I've translated it to, <coughs> is that when it goes up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to equal the price action or greater than the past 14 candles um, on a down move. So, 
we can calculate this here and we'll just go 14 bars back and we can see um, the previous one I don't know if that's a very yeah it is so 13 bars in was the last um, bottom of generational low of those all-time low of those 14 candles um, and also the Aaron also takes wicks into consideration unlike some other things where it's just bodies um, the Aaron does calculate wicks um, so I know that if this this doesn't always happen because you see you have the zigzag here but if it goes from the bottom to top that's what that's what I call a high bearish cross and that's, as far as I know, that's a word I made up, or a phrase I made up. And what that tells me is that this next candle, the candle that hasn't even showed up yet an hour from now, again, this is easier in hindsight, but it's going to equal at least the bottom of one of these wicks. And sure enough, it did. You know, and it, it actually went, it'll be at least. Um, I, I've i noticed it go way lower. And, you know, and you can just ride that out. Or you can just have you can have it stop there, and that's um, let's see the price first. Yeah, the price if you stop here and you let's say you just closed it, I mean that's two percent. I mean that's two percent. That's just two percent in one hour, versus you know it's a lot more effective on a daily time frame or even excuse me even on a weekly frame. Um, right now it's a little confusing because there's alts that are bottomed out. Um, and so that so I'll just show you for example like here um, the low this kind of got this got low enough for an example but it got high here but it only went up you know so high because this this whole this whole area is just flatlined and it's hard to tell with all the flatlining that's going on it's it's a lot less accurate when we're just having these fifty dollar moves. <coughs> So, but that's the idea behind that. You get 2% an hour, and I understand there's better ways to get that 2% or different ways, and to each his own. Um, but that's how it, that was effective for me, and it, you know, it, it does work. Um, sometimes, honestly, sometimes it doesn't, though, because you got this low here. Um, oh, this this kind of worked, actually. Um, your, your first bottom low started here so let's say you got in at, at here um, and it went up here I mean you got you know three point four percent in a day I, I mean that's I mean three three point four six percent in a day is 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 pretty decent I mean so um, it's hit or miss but I found it to be um, pretty pretty useful so that that's it with with calculating that price my medium article shows way better examples where you can catch I or Bitcoin you can catch I think one of my posts was a 17% move um, you can use it um, my I guess kind of a plug is I am making a custom a rune script um, to kinda have this automated to where you can it'll give you like buy here sell here you know, and then buy here, sell here. I mean, that's going to be the idea. It's going to be kind of a almost like a, a buy sell signal thing. Um, and I'll try to do, do my best to come out with a free version and you know, just a, a very cheap version. Um, so um, that's with that. With that, that's what that's it with that. And then I'm also um, sorry, I kind of stuttered because I'm thinking something about the bots um, still working on the bots um, and one of the bots I'm gonna have um, is gonna be based on the Aaron script too um, if, if I can get it to do it um, so we'll see you know it depends how effective it is it depends um, I've noticed that some coins work better than others the best um, this Aaron strategy tends to work best on Bitcoin Litecoin ZRX and, and bat token um, and Neo too. Um, 
some some coins um, don't work as well. Um, so I'm I'm gonna my plan is to get four bots, and I'm gonna have different strategies for different coins. And right now I'm looking right now I'm looking at Bitcoin, Litecoin, um, ZRX, and um, probably Ethereum. Uh, oh, so. It, um, Ether Classic is what I have problems with with the Arun for some reason. Doesn't do too well with ETC, um, probably because it hit it sucks. <laughs> but um, so that's a little insight on the, on the bots and the scripts. Um, so I'm basically I'm trying to cover the GDAX Coinbase coins, um, and that's part of my intent behind the special altcoins. Is if you noticed, I mean all those coins. Um, have been listed on Coinbase before they were even listed on Coinbase. Like I put, I put ETC on there, um, and then I put. Yeah, I, I think I had ETC the week that they listed that, and I had um, ZRX on there too, um, and I had that way before the, it was listed. I mean, one, I'm a big fan of ZRX, but two, like I just had a feeling it was going to get listed, and we got Cardano too, and I, I feel like Cardano might be next. Um, let let me get, let. Tell me what you guys think about ETC, by the way, because I know it, it seems like nobody cares about it. So um, I'm definitely in favor of changing that or changing any of the, alt, the special altcoin channels in favor of something that you guys do like. Because um, I don't, I don't know if anybody's even mentioned ETC um, in the Discord for a long time. Anyway, uh, kind of a, that was kind of a rant, I guess. Um, so and I think that's mainly it. I mean, what? What are some other indicators that I, that I like? I mean, I like Fibonacci. Um, not as not as good at it as other people are. Um, so I just don't use it as much. <coughs> um, Bolger, Bolger bands. I'm not too big. Honestly, I'm not really that big of a fan of Bolger bands. Um, just because they, they, I mean, they really just show volatile volatility. Don't necessarily show direction. And even uh, Bollinger himself has, has said that. I mean, it's a good indicator, and I like it. Um, it's just not effective for my trade set. It's just there's too much information on the screen um, without the results I'm looking for. I'm always trying to look for the minimum amount I can do with the maximum results. And it's just it works, and I know it works for a lot of you guys. Uh, so I apologize. I don't want to offend you guys, but it's just something I just don't. Don't use. I mean, EMAs I use. Um, I think. Okay, so I used to use a guppy and just um, take out half the guppies. Um, I mean, envelope is is similar to uh, Bollinger Band. Um, I have used No Sure Thing some, um, and it's it's decent. Um, I don't really use it that much because it it's a slower moving indicator and it's one of those things I can. I can just use it once every two weeks and probably be okay. Um, <clears throat> so moon phase is not a fan, um, but I get it, I guess. Um, so anyway, those are basically it on those. Um, Ichimoto Cloud, I have huge respect for people that use it, but it's like a different language for me. Uh, MACD, I, I'm just not a fan either, honestly. Um, it hasn't worked out too well uh, for me. And um, if it work, like I said, if if these if these work out for you guys, um, that's good. Um, I want you guys to use what you want to use and what what you're what you're able to use and make money on. Um, so that's that's part of why I'm here. That's part of why I got the group here. Um, if you got any questions, uh, please feel free um, and let me know. And I'll just see you in Discord.